What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out the Ghost and PewDiePie A1 Wireless Mechanical Keyboard. Obviously, if you're a fan of the Pewds, you're going to be uh, probably wanting to pick this up, because it's a pretty interesting collaboration with a big time YouTuber and a keyboard company. So if you want to check it out, we'll go over it all, talk about my opinions, pros and cons, all that stuff, in case you're interested in the PewDiePie and Ghost A1. So, this collaboration of Ghost and PewDiePie will run the floor gang a whopping $230, which even still, for a wireless 60% keyboard, is pretty expensive. But this is the A1 keyboard model versus their other K1. The difference is the build materials, as this board's chassis is all aluminum, so it's a higher quality, more solid build altogether. And taking a look at it, you can see all the nods to Pewds, with it having some of those nice novelty accents throughout, highlighted by his signature reddish-pinkish color for the modifiers with that wavy pattern, as well as some cool Waz keys, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. Then also included inside the box is another box, you get the Bluetooth receiver for pairing this wireless keyboard to your PC if it doesn't already have Bluetooth, a USB-C cable for charging, and a keycap puller. However, I did not receive the extra space bar that it said it included on the packaging. <laughs> I guess they're just reusing old packaging. But visually, it is a nice refresher to see some personality on a keyboard in the community. I think they catered to his fans well. From the signature Brofist logo and the escape key, the default red RGB lighting when you turn on the keyboard to match the accented modifiers, the branding on the front lip of the case for both Ghost and PewDiePie there, to my favorite addition, the actual textured Waz keys with the wavy pattern embossed onto the top. It all just looks really nice as a total package. Some other things I want to point out, and I mentioned it before, but with this being wireless, we do have a USB-C port on the backside for charging, or just using this wired if you choose. And for those who aren't too familiar with 60% keyboards, yes, we all know it's smaller, and no, you're not really losing out on functionality unless you need the numpad. So the way these 60% boards make up for the loss of physical keys is with functions. On the front side of the PBT keycaps, you can see all the additional rows of functions that you would still have at your disposal. Brightness, media keys, volume control, arrow keys, it's literally all still there for you. But one physical thing you do lose out with this particular keyboard is a flip out feet underneath with this A1 model. Uh, so the case by design is slightly angled a little bit, but you do not have that additional flip out feet for adding height. But in terms of builds, you know, obviously with an all CNC aluminum board like this, there's not going to be no flex. It's definitely hefty, nice and solid. So construction wise, definitely all good. Moving on, under the caps, as you can see for our switches, we do have cherry reds. They also sell this with cherry blues and browns. I recently saw Gatteron reds available as an option, but the red switches here are going to give us that linear feel during use. And the shelf for these cherry switches is that crystal see-through housing, which is going to allow the LED light to shine through better. And also to note, under the space bar, we do have four additional LEDs to illuminate that area more evenly. Now, like I said before, with all those additional functions you have, they do include a user guide with it all laid out for you. So that's definitely going to be your friend when it comes to learning your keyboard. But saved onto the board itself with no need for additional software are 19 presets of different RGB lighting effects. And if you're familiar with like Ducky and keyboards like that, then odds are you've seen most of these lighting effects before. But you do have a lot of variety when it comes to picking whatever sort of, you know, effect that you like and what you want to have on your keyboard. You change the effects with function tab. There's also a custom mode where you can go in and manually configure each individual key and what color you want it to be if you want to kind of design an effect yourself, which honestly is way too tedious, but it is an option. So technically 20 effects if you're including that custom one. But also if you're not nine years old and you want to keep us a nice static color, which I think is the way to go here, you can change that with function and control. That's gonna enable the solo color. You could cycle through the colors there. And like I said, default is red when you turn the keyboard on. You can go through and pick function U and then function I is also gonna control the four levels of actual brightness. So real quick, we'll do a sound test with the cherry red switches.
So as you can hear, the, the board itself overall has a pretty noticeable and loud ping in terms of resonance and stuff. And that's just because, again, of the aluminum body. That is to be expected, but man, like $2 in terms of manufacturing costs would have went a long way if they could have added some sort of dampening foam in here for a really, really cheap price on their end. It really would have made this sound a lot better. Now they also claim the stabilizers here are factory lubed, and that's mostly true. So check this out. Underneath the keycaps for the stabilizer keys, you can see this sheen on the top of the stem. So yes, the stem itself is wet, and that's seemingly the only part of the stabilizer here that is lubed, which just leads me to think that they think lubing a switch is just that in the literal sense, where you just apply lube to the top of the switch, I guess. And again, underneath, you can see the actual stabilizer bar itself, which is what should have lube on it. It is completely dry. And that would also mean there is no evidence of residue of lube from inside the housing of the stabilizer, which again is what should have actually had the lube on it. And as you heard during the sound test, like the stabilizers didn't sound too bad overall. It's just interesting to see their take on lubing stabilizers. Um, it's definitely wrong, we could say that, but I mean, thankfully for them, it doesn't sound too bad. So I can only imagine how good it would sound if they properly lubed the stabilizers. And like I said before, added that dampening foam. This thing could sound a million times better if they just went that extra, extra foot, not even the extra mile, an extra foot. Now, for my time using it, both just regular use with web browsing as well as gaming, I didn't have any issues. Like I said, it includes that Bluetooth 5.0 dongle if you want to pair this to your PC that doesn't already have Bluetooth capabilities, or you can choose to pick up a nice fancy custom coiled cable and give this board a whole new look. But I didn't have any lag or interference issues, which is good. But, you know, naturally with Bluetooth, it's going to suffice for 99% of the people out there, but it's still just not as fast or as accurate compared to something like Logitech's Lightspeed or Razer's Hyperspeed, for example. You know, they have their own proprietary wireless technology, but here for this novelty keyboard like this, Bluetooth is still going to be just fine. So in terms of pros, I mean, for a novelty keyboard, yes, it looks really nice. It's wireless. You have the RGB. You have what the viewers of PewDiePie are going to want. Um, for cons, though, $230 is very, very expensive. And one thing I noticed on the sides, mainly on the front side of the, uh, the bottom row here for the keys, the ink and the printing with that wavy pattern starts to fade a bit. And it's really not too noticeable, but I mean, when you're looking at it, you can see that the ink and the wavy pattern is a lot less saturated than it is on top. And yes, that's probably normal in a printing process like this, uh, but it does kind of, you know, once I saw it, I can't unsee it kind of thing. And for $230, I don't want to see that. Also worth bringing up, like I showed you, is the lubing is done all wrong here. And I still think that just a layer of dampening foam would have done this board wonders. Now, bringing it all together, my honest thoughts for you guys, 230 is just way too much. And I understand that PewDiePie is the biggest YouTuber of all time, you know? Over 100 million subscribers, but they're still narrowing down their potential audience to a very small percentage. Because of his viewers, how many of them are going to willingly shell out $230 for a wireless keyboard? The, the answer is probably a lot. I don't know the numbers, but they probably moved a lot of units because that's how his fan base is. You know, they're dedicated. They love him. He puts out a keyboard, a nice looking novelty keyboard. It probably sold well. But in the end, given the competition and other keyboards in the market, it's just not a good value. You have the Ducky Mecha Mini, which is, you know, aluminum keyboard as well. Very solid, 60%. It's not wireless, but it's only $120. Durgod Venus, a better version of the Ducky Mecha Mini, I'd say, with lube stabilizers, properly done, as well as dampening foam, only $100. So the, the main selling point to the PewDiePie and Ghost A1 is the fact that it has a novelty look to it. You know, it's very custom and unique, which yes, it looks good. Uh, but also the fact that it's wireless. That's the main advantage here. It has Bluetooth. But just being honest real quick, I think if you're buying this keyboard, why would you not, you know, want to also pick up a nice custom coil keyboard uh, cable like this, have it on your desktop, and really complete the look overall? And if I'm being honest, I think this looks better than it being wireless, because with a keyboard like this, again, it's into the custom market, when you get these sort of accents and stuff, you want to make it more custom. So that's where the custom cable comes in and completes the look. 
and even still for $230 you can even get start to you know put your foot into the custom keyboard uh, community get into that door hell I know for me and my custom keyboard with novel keys we put out our very own NK65 you know the random Frank P one we did that was $220 and I think that's a better value because you have a polycarbonate build, which, you know, it's not as solid as aluminum, obviously, but polycarbonate's going to give you that sort of nostalgic look for some people. It's going to sound better versus aluminum. And also, that keyboard has hot swap sockets, so you could put in whatever switches you want. So, more flexibility there, and I just, I can't justify 230 for this keyboard. Again, it probably sold very, very well. I'm sure they moved tons of units, and yes, it looks really good, but there are just better keyboards out there so um, I know for me I never heard of ghost before this but now they're on my radar certainly and I'm interested to see you know where they go from here I'm sure they made a lot of money I'm sure pews made a lot of money so I want to see their next step I know like I said I was interested in it that's why I wanted to check it out but I just can't say it's worth the total package and cost of what you're getting in the end so that'll wrap it up for my you know sort of review of the novelty ghost and PewDiePie K1 wireless mechanical keyboard. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.